what really happened on that holy mountain mount tabor the gospel tells us jesus was transfigured before them his human figure took a divine glory the disciples were granted a glimpse of the glory of the son of god and we are told this happened 6 days later which were these 6 days 6 days after peter's confession in caesarea philippi in caesarea philippi jesus asked the disciples who do people say that i am who do you say that i am and that's when peter confessed and proclaimed you are the son of god peter hardly knew what he was saying because he was saying what was given to him by the father jesus said simon you are blessed it is my father who revealed this to you it's not your intellect a revelation you got and, and peter just blurted out what he got is a revelation from the father and now from there they started Caesarea Philippi was up north we go to Jerusalem Jesus told them on the way and there in Jerusalem son of man will be handed over to the enemies betrayed condemned and crucified but he will be raised from the dead peter did not understand that he was still in that great acceleration of confessing that jesus was the son of god but here peter got a glimpse just a glimpse of the divine personality of jesus what jesus looked like his face began to shine like that of sun and his clothes became dazzling white as no fuller on earth could bleach them trying to put in words an overwhelming experience that could not be expressed because we are told they were terrified and and peter said master rabbi it is good for us to be here a moment peter was so overwhelmed Jesus is enough with Jesus life will reach its fullness Moses and Elijah the most revered of the prophets of Israel who prepared the people for the Messiah appeared to them and the father's voice This is my beloved son. I am well pleased in him. Listen to him. The heavenly father, the creator, the prophets, the heavenly glory. Peter was so filled with joy and said, Rabbi, let's not go away from here. It's good to be here. but we must understand peter 
had not always felt it that it is good to be here with jesus there were times peter was bored being in the presence of jesus there were times peter felt defeated there were times peter was hungry mark chapter 2 peter was going behind jesus through a cornfield he was plucking corn and eating on sabbath poor man was hungry and at one time the master rebuked him get behind me satan you are not thinking the thoughts of god but of man a rebuke that peter got from jesus once peter was thoroughly defeated the whole night he and his companions were fishing casting the net caught nothing defeated and one time peter thought what was important was to carry favor with a servant girl and for that he even denied the master i don't know him denied three times i tell you by god i don't know him peter could not displease that servant girl peter stooped so low there were times such times in peter's life with jesus but now praying on that holy mountain the three disciples and jesus praying with the lord peter experienced the joy and delight of being with the heavenly lord so filled with the glory of heaven he proclaimed it's good to be here later when peter was writing his letters second letter of peter chapter 1 verse 16 peter speaks about it we are not telling you cleverly devised myths but we are making known to you the power of the son of god we saw him in glory and we heard the voice of the heavenly father that jesus is the beloved son asking us to listen to him the experience on mount tabor was so overwhelming that in the strength of that experience peter could even give himself over to be crucified in rome my dear sisters and brothers we are living a christian commitment living it out in different situations of our life in different relationships of our life we are living out a commitment to the lord there are moments this life with jesus is not pleasant rather burdensome tiring boring and we even deny the master that could happen to us and the gospel today reveals to us when is it we experience living for jesus living with jesus the disciples of jesus is truly fulfilling these are the moments we climb up to the holy mountain moments when we are together with the lord say for example in marriage in family life before the lord we commit ourselves 
to live with the wife, with the husband, accepting our children from the hands of God, living as a family. And we know it is sacred. It's the will of God. And yet, in our family life, there are difficult moments. Moments of betrayal. Moments of sadness. Moments when the other lets me down. Moments I, I feel I made a mistake in this marriage. Moments we feel like throwing off everything and running away. When is it we feel good to be here in the family? To be with my wife, to be with my husband, to be with my children. Not always when, when I look at the face of my wife. Not always when I reach my hand out for love before my husband. You could be rejected. You could be betrayed. You could be bored up with the presence of the other. Family life becomes beautiful. Good to be here, that experience of being good to be in the family only in the presence of Jesus. Then as a family, we climb up the holy mountain. Climbing up the holy mountain is coming to the presence of God. Traditionally, we say transfiguration happened on Mount Tabor, because that's the only high mountain between Caesarea Philippi and Jerusalem. But none of the gospel writers give the name of Mount Tabor. St. Peter writes in the letter, Holy Mountain. You know why? The name of that mount is not given to tell us clearly, we must find a holy mountain. It is not a place. It is where we choose to go in search of God. It's your bedroom. It's your living room. It's your prayer room. Come together as a family in prayer. In prayer. Waiting for the Lord to manifest his glory. And the Lord will manifest his glory as Peter tells us. He will never hide his face from us. Why is it we are not able to see the face of the Lord? Why is it we are not able to feel the presence of the Lord? Why is it we are not able to hear the voice of the Lord? Only when, only because we do not wait for him. Peter, James, and John waited. Waited for the revelation of the glory of God. And Jesus did not fail them. We need to learn to wait upon God in prayer. Come away from all the works we have to do. Come away from all the preoccupations we are engaged in. Come away from all the troubles of life. Come away to that mountain, to the presence of God. Mountain in the Bible is always the place of God's presence where men and women went up to pray, where God revealed his glorious face. It could be your prayer room. It could be your living room where you come together in search of the Lord. The Lord will never fail you. It is in such moments of prayer, when you are together with the Lord, that you experience the overwhelming, self-forgetting, glorious presence of God. This must happen in every aspect of our life. Often, we go for a 
parish meetings parish council meeting or other groups gathering in the parish what do we do usually we discuss we talk to each other we listen to each other perhaps there's a prayer of half a minute in, in the beginning and many of us come after that prayer even if there's a prayer in between we go out at that time for something else because what do we imagine important is that we talk to each other we listen to each other not to listen to god not to open the eyes to see the glory of the lord whenever the disciples of jesus come together for whatever purpose the one thing we must be doing is to be in prayer of course we need to discuss and what do we discuss things that could do me good my family good why am i so confined to my selfish interests why am i so confined to the hatred to the other because in prayer i never experienced the divine glory of the son of god in family why do we complain all the time complain against the wife complain against the husband angry at the children because i'm not able to transcend myself rise above my own selfish thinking selfish concerns selfish preoccupations my self is projected to that extent everyone else is excluded everyone else will be included in family life when god is present what's important is come together as a family come together wherever you're working for god in prayer and wait to listen and you will hear the voice of the heavenly father this my beloved son giving us jesus as our savior only when we experience jesus we take jesus from the hands of the heavenly father as my savior only then will we experience the glory of being with the lord it's good to be here i will know this i will experience it in my family in my parish community in my prayer meeting only in opening my heart in prayer and what happened on that holy mountain should happen to every one of us the lord is inviting us and the lord is promising us as in paul tells us today if god is there for us who can be against us that confidence of courage and faith comes to us from a tangible experience of the glorious presence of the lord god is there for me waiting upon god to experience the divine glory of god you know we take jesus for granted we take jesus as another leader a revolutionary leader the soul what jesus is for us is terrible he's the son of god and we need to perceive his glory we need to experience the glorious presence of the son of god in our midst in our life wherever we are and then we would say it's good to be here it's good to belong to the lord and when god is there for me nothing can go wrong with me that confidence of being a christian the confidence the mark 
martyrs of the early church had the martyrs they could march to martyrdom singing praises of god to give their life to god that joy of belonging to the lord we should be able to experience in our family and wherever we are together amen